And I think um, one of the things it seemed like you wanted to do was make her mid-range game very, very strong. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about her back one, which is this magical blast. It's a low-hitting move. It's relatively fast. Yeah, it, it causes a pretty nice knockdown. Uh, the only way you're going to get a combo off it, really, uh, for the most part, is using that Meter Burn Curse, which we'll, we'll cover uh, later. But, um, yeah, you kind of just have to commit to it. It is safe, but you, you're spending the bar on hit or miss. She also has this 4 2 3, which is a mid, pretty good range. It's pretty fast, and you can actually Meter Burn it, and then they're trapped in a giant block of ice. Right. So that's a Meter Burn. Normal. Yes, it's a meter burn normal attack. There's a few of those in the game. And you can hit confirm this, which means like you can see, oh, it hit. And then you can go into the meter burn, and then you can get a free back three. Right. And do a big combo. Yeah, it's kind of interesting because you meter burn it before it hits. Like, it uh, changes the beginning attack. So that also makes it so if you're punishing something uh, that's pretty punishable, you can do four, two, three, meter burn, back three, four, three, and it's all unclashable. So that, that's pretty nice. And something we always talk about, too, that a lot of fighting game fans really like are advancing moves. Oh, yeah. And you, that, that's, oh, yeah. that has a good, good, good bit of an advancement to it. Another one of her key normals is her back two, which actually uses this magical energy sword. Right. It, it's got more range than her forward, two, So you use it in those ranges where... You maybe want to try and whiff punish something that it won't quite reach, or you think the person might walk back and you don't want to whiff right in front of their face, and right. etc. That's also a hit confirmable staring off right. the first two hits. Now, when people thought they thought that maybe Enchantress would be a zoner, as we're seeing with these moves, she does really try to control that middle ground. Yeah, you can see even her jump attacks are good at that. This is her jump two, and it's really, really good. A lot of range. And I think one more move to look at would be her 2-3 combo, which is starts with this gut jab and then goes into this diamond. And the diamond has a lot of uses. You can actually just do it immediately and it's a combo, or you can hold it down and charge it, and if it's fully charged, it becomes an unblockable. And there's a unique twist to it. She also has 2-1, where she will hold it out, and if the opponent tries to attack, it's an auto parry that does a Big chunk of damage. So that's just that's an interesting mix-up we haven't seen with yeah. a lot of different characters. And she can dash out of it. She can cancel it. So, like, if the opponent, hey, I'm going to do the unblockable, and they're like, oh, I'm going to punish that unblockable, you'll never get me this time, you witch. Boom, they get paired. <laughs> <laughs> now, here's the thing. Do the other one real quick. Do, do them both. Not to him. Do them away from him. Can, okay. You can actually tell a difference in the diamond. Yes. So this diamond has no, like, lit up peaks. Yeah. Where the other one does. So if you're playing a lot, you can discern them. Yes. It's not super easy, right? But and there then, is a, a, a difference in look. And that's also open up. one of those things where, if you're looking for that, it kind of has to be held long enough for you to notice which one it is. And even then, it Probably might too be late. too yeah, late. Yeah, there's right. going to be layers and layers of mix-ups of doing it and then dashing out of it and all kind of good stuff. Uh, is there any other normal you wanted to show? Um, you should show her duck. That's true, because it just looks cool. <laughs> and her back three is one of my favorites in the game. And her four three, it's a bulma strike. Uh, uh, it does have different ranges. Which yes, wasn't, which is so. different. Yes, her four three, she can actually do close, medium, and far. Several characters have a close and medium one. She's the only one that has a far one. So her four three can hit from pretty far away, and then she can run up and do a combo. So for me, like players like me, that's like another special move. Essentially, yeah. 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 Yeah, you're going to use it in ranges you normally would not use a 4-3, but I mean, that's kind of the fun of it. Let's also check out our throw, because it's definitely one of the coolest in the game. Yeah. I want to say... <laughs> I just like how it came out a lot. That's really <laughs> cool. Um, I remember when I, I first saw you... I first saw it when it was... There was no, like, uh, any sort of, like cool effects to it yet. Yes. And I was still like... That's going to be amazing. And it turned out really well. And I do love the fact that every time we do a stream, we show the throw, and we say, that's the coolest throw we've seen yet. <laughs> that's actually a good point. It's, yeah, yeah, like last time, yeah. like Adam. Yeah, that's his true. His throw is baller. Um, and her down two is also, a lot of people even notice in the trailer, her down two is fantastic. It's super fast, and it's super high. It's, it's great. So, I think you can understand that you'll notice she doesn't have a lot of high-low mix-ups. She, her big overhead is one two two the second hit, and her low, like we said, you have to commit if you want to do a combo. But in the mid to long range, she's really, really strong, and I think that complements her special moves. So we'll start with her 
Astral Soul Rip, where she tears her own soul out and then crushes it. This is a good combo ender. It's the move she'll do like a down one into it. If she wants like a quick down one. It's, it's her, her wake up attack. Right, it's her wake up attack. It's punishable, but it has good range. It's one of those things where like... It's also gonna be hard to punish from further away. Right, like it's one of those things where on paper it's super punishable, but if they're super far away, it's gonna be kind of hard. And that's really her only typical by the numbers special move. From here on out, we're gonna get weird. We well, should also show the uh, meter oh, right yeah. Now. oh yeah, that's a good <laughs> so point. So it's not actually by the numbers. Okay, so this is one of her resource moves. She will actually heal herself. Instead of it doing any more damage, she will take their soul into her body and absorb their soul energy into her health. Yep. So it already is starting to get weird. Yeah, and now we're going to get really weird. So she has Hell's Gate. And once the gate is active, it will actually reflect projectiles back as her own energy beam. And the cool thing is she's full... She is fully capable of moving around and playing the game when it is out. You can see it's very fast, has really good recovery, lasts for a long, long time. And this move is going to complement the rest of her moveset. This is a move that's going to be great. She could put it out, and now Superman's like, oh man, doing Heat Zap is dangerous, and she's going to do her character power and her other buffs. Like, for example, her curse, which I think is one of her core moves. She draws a pentagram, and then she will actually debuff the opponent. The interesting thing is, this move does not actually hit. She does it and it's going to connect. Unless Superman is in an invincible state, like he's knocked down, or he back dashes. Or behind the earth. Yeah. If she's thing. able to point, he is cursed. Now, can you block it? You No, this is, not, yeah, this is not an attack you can block or duck or anything like that. So, what do the curses actually do? So, there's four different curses that can happen. Um, that one, for example, prevents super meter from being gained. Uh, that one, if you meter burn a move, it damages you and gives Enchantress meter. Uh, one of them disables special moves from being used. And the last one is uh, you take damage when you jump or duck. So if you put that on Sonic Fox, you're probably going to win the game if you try to stick that game. <laughs> yeah, like, and you'll also notice it does a little bit of damage. And at first you're thinking, oh, it's like 3%, who cares? But that's the beauty of Enchantress. She's going to put the wall up, and then she's going to do a curse. She's going to put the wall up, she'll put her character power, which we'll show later, and she's going to do a curse. And then you try to get in, because you don't want to deal with the curse, and that's when she starts hitting her with a long range. Now, does the, the curse stack? Uh, you keep refreshing the same one. Uh, if you curse someone and curse them before it's up, it just reapplies the same curse, so you don't get a reroll or anything. But, uh, does it increase you, damage? or does It, it still it? does that uh, 3% or whatever yeah, damage. Yeah. Um, so, for example, if you get, you know, special move disable curse, and you're against, you know, a, a zoner, you can keep doing that, and you're like, hey, you gotta come to me. Yeah, you know? yeah. You'll notice from full screen, she doesn't have that much of a presence in terms of, like, a projectile or, like, teleporting and anything like that. But you have to come to her, because this is gonna add up. Yeah, that's the special move disable one. So, so real, real, real quick, so I just want to talk about chat, because chat is fun for me to talk about. Okay. One person said, finally, a true anti-zoner. The next one, the next thing underneath it is, okay. oh, a zoner. Yeah, she's well, not. I mean, <laughs> it's just funny how they're you're, Yeah. <laughs> Maybe against another melee character you'll see her do stuff like that, but... Um, she checks a lot of boxes. This, uh, yeah. this curse, if you, if you do it, you'll see it takes quite a while to uh, happen here. But not gonna be using it too much for. But there's a trick zoning. to it. When you meter burn it, she can actually meter burn it at almost any point in it. Right. She'll actually <laughs> that's just... one of the interesting things too. If uh, and then say that's... for example, you're cursing kind of far away. I'm like, uh oh, I want to stop her. And yeah. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> and then you get that's your main combo starter. So that's both a combo star and kind of a trap move. So it turns into it, it turns yes. it into a wall bounce, which I really love. It's one of the few moves in the game that's not a physical hit at all, and yet when you meter burn it, it becomes one of her best physical hits. So now let's talk about her mana shield. When this is active, instead of taking damage from her health bar, if I am hit, I will actually take the damage through her super meter. So check out her super meter. Uh, I think did you change it off for you, Phil? Yeah. All right. Uh, so now if I'm hit. You can see it's actually draining her super mirror. This is an awesome, really interesting meta shifting move. And that does like She takes scenarios. no damage there. She will take no damage while she has an active and while she has super mirror to take. So we're looking at a tournament. Yes. End of the game. 
Enchantress is her life bar is flashing. And she has made the decision, hey, instead of clashing or using my super, I'm gonna hoard this meter. Mm -hmm. She activates it, she can be hit. It's not like you gain armor, but she will not take the damage from her life bar. And that's gonna allow her to take more risks, to be more crazy, and it's an ultimate, it's a huge lifesaver. We have had matches in the lab where it's like, why won't you die? And she's just won't die. Because right. she had three to four bars or two bars or whatever. Yeah, but then again, once once that happens, if she does get comboed and she's on the ground, now she's missing two bars a meter or more. Right, and that means she's not going to be able to clash or, you know, will win a or, clash. Or, yeah, the clash yeah. might lose, yeah. She would not be able to meter burn this to do big combos. She wouldn't be able to get her health back with this. I think she's, like a lot of characters in Injustice, she's not an overly strong character if she doesn't have meter. So it's, it's you in Injustice, one of the key things is meter makes you really, really good. Clash saves your life, how do you weigh it? She has this third option, which I think is really cool. And it's not just end of game. That's just my favorite way. Yeah. You can use it for a magic pixel. Imagine an Enchantress player in tournament. The magic pixel scenario is already annoying. <laughs> like, I imagine her <laughs> doing that. Oh. There's actually even been first rounds. Now, where to me, that's actually, sometimes in, this, in, in the inju yeah. Injustice, the way our life bars work, you want to get as much damage out, bef like if you've drained their life bar, you don't want to lose yours. You want to get as much damage out till you go to second round too. Yep, absolutely. So, moving on, she has this parry move. When this is active, she will actually teleport behind them. And then, depending on the recovery move, she can actually get a combo. So this is one of the very rare full combo parries that does, excuse me, that doesn't use a bar meter. And she has a second option. She will actually drop down from the ground and she can get a full jump in. So, the parry's not that fast. It's gotta be one of the slower ones, right? Yeah, yeah. But, you don't even have to use a bar or meter, and if they do a move with a lot of recovery, they're gonna get blown up. So it's pretty effective. Yeah, it's also interesting too, because you know, if you parry a, a down one, for example, uh, you're not gonna be able to punish it because they recover so fast, but you're gonna appear from the ceiling or behind them, and they have to react to that. It's right. like, might be hard for them to even just block which side you're gonna end up on. So let's go into her super move before we even talk about her character power. Sounds good. Awesome. Man, Superman got beat up by his own soul. Mm -hmm. Well, he's weak to magic. So. Right, that's canon. Oh, All man. All the Kryptonians. <laughs> which means an answer to Supergirl, finally. Right. Right. Enchantress. <laughs> yeah. All right, so her character power is super interesting. She actually summons a demon, the Lord Zabalba. Now, Zabalba acts <laughs> on his own. I'm not controlling him. Once I summon him, Zabalba is going to go forward and follow the opponent, and eventually he's going to do this big overhead. The explosion also acts as a hit, so you can see it's two hits. So if he tries to armor it, he's nope. gonna get blown up. Like, literally blown up by that hellfire. But Zavala has a few commands of his own. I can actually stop him. And now, if Superman tries to walk forward, you can see he's blocked. So this is absolutely awesome for, hey, I'm gonna do my curses, I'm gonna turn my mana shield on, I'm gonna get my wall out. The demon totally complements all the moves we just talked about. And the last one is she can summon him and then blow him up by snapping her fingers and he blows up. So Zabalba, there's gonna be all, this is, if you are one of those players that you like your weird corner, unblockable setups, you can go nuts. Like, what are some of the ideas you came up with? Yeah, I mean, there's situations where, you know, you can, uh, oh, standing two is a restand move, I don't know if we talked about that, but uh, yeah, you can go standing two into, you know, charging the three while Zabalba is in that defensive stance behind you and you might let it rip and hit them if they try and jump out. Let it rip. Yeah, you know. Beyblade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's not what we were thinking. Or if you, you know, if they just sit there and wait, oh, I'm scared, you hit them with the unblockable and then do the attack and you can get a combo off it. There's lots of crazy stuff. I mean, I'm excited to see what people come up with, uh, interesting ways to use the demon. Yeah, and like I said, it totally complements her movement. She's, she's one of those characters where once she gets going, she can really steamroll you. Like, it's like a snowball rolling downhill. She's got the wall out, she's got the curse out, then she gets mana shield, and she has two bars, so you're not going to hit her. The demon totally starts that, and you're like, all right, it's my time now. Mm -hmm. So you want to you get on top of this real quick. 
You want to yeah. because like her wake up's fine. Her wake, yeah, her wake up's. So I mean, it gets the job done. Right. So generally, like, get on top of it early. Yeah. And win, or she might start using all of the. What, what are we talk? What are we calling them? Resources. The resources she yeah. has. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one thing to note too about the curse is, uh, if you have an opponent curse and do certain moves, they get amplified and consume the curse. Like her throw will do more damage than the standard eleven percent and give her half a bar of meter. And here's another example. You can see normally they fall out of this. However, if you have the curse up, when it breaks, they will not, and you actually get a restand. So there's another example of setups you can find with that. And oh yeah. Plenty of stuff, yeah. So let's her go. Let, let's her go hard in the paint a little bit. Absolutely, <laughs> and that's that's how she rolls. Mm -hmm. She learned that from June. <laughs> <laughs> Did she though? <laughs> Absolutely, that's canon. Okay, not everything's canon, Steve. That's canon with a K. Fine. So, I think that's kind of uh, Enchantress's main gameplay here. I like it. Can we uh, let's take a look? Let's talk for a second before we go back to what we're going to do next. We have some fun stuff happening in a moment. Well, I do have loadouts. We're going to do that in a second. Okay. I just want to say a few things real quick. Uh, uh, we got the uh, Fighting Game of the Year from Game Informer. Yes, that's awesome. So that's a big thing. So yes. Thank you to all of our fans who voted for us. We're very happy with all of the awards the game is, is, yes. is receiving. Uh, it's all thanks to you guys for playing the game and continuing to play the game. So really, thank you for that. We are, we're humbled by all of that because you know, we make games for gamers. And when gamers give back like that, it's really cool. Yes, so, that's super cool. First of all, that's awesome. Uh, after we go through the loadouts... We've decided, like we did last time when you were here, it's been a while. Yep, yep. Uh, months, yeah. We're going to have Dizzy and 16-Bit. I'm going to call you both by your old fighting game names. All right, oh, I wow. guess. That's because fine. they're going to do a best of three with yeah. Enchantress versus... I'm thinking Supergirl. Okay. Yeah. So you guys are going to play each other. Yep. That's awesome. And whenever you're on, people always tweet me and say, we can get a match, some matches out of you guys. Now, I know that you're seeing a lot of high-level play when me and Derek play. Right. That's some of the highest level <laughs> right. play that you can get. Um, people say it's not because we're a meta ahead. Yeah, the, you guys are playing a level that they just don't understand. It's like when you watch like a chess grandmaster and they're right. moving really quickly, you don't really get it. You right. don't appreciate it. Uh, they think we're dropping combos. Those are all resets. Those are, yeah, those are resets. Every single yeah. one of them. Uh, because we play each other so many times, we know what's next. We, I know seven steps ahead. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You're th playing three-dimensional chess. Right, exactly. So now that you understand that better, maybe maybe won't talk, talk as much crap on Twitch. Right. Maybe? No. Okay, let's go take a look at these loadouts real quick. <laughs> All right, so I made two loadouts. This one, loadout two, is my personal favorite. This is what I use. You can see she has her glowing chest piece thing, mm. her leggings. And my favorite part, a lot of people wondered, can you change her magical effects with your shader? Yes, you can. I love this orange color. It changes all of them. Super cool. Alright, so in this loadout, this one changes her character power. She gets magical clones of herself. Only one is real. It's very similar to a move Zatanna had. So if you really like Zatanna's playstyle, I think you're going to like her period, but this is even better. Like, you can really make her like Zatanna. Yeah, that's one of the cool opportunities of uh, the abilities, is you can bring back some, uh, some throwback moves uh, that you might have liked in other games or whatnot. Uh, so, yeah. And cool. you can actually choose which of the witches you're controlling. Whoa. And the opponent's going to have to guess which witch is which. <laughs> Wh I knew, yeah. Uh, yeah. Bur also, Burke's not liking that. Also on this loadout, I gave her a meter burn mana shield, where when she is in this bubble, she takes significantly reduced damage. But the main reason I wanted to show it is because the effects are awesome. Look I, at that. When we, looked, when we went over this yesterday, I didn't see the mirroring that was happening with... Uh, yeah. With the Enchantress, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, cool. So she takes less damage inside, uh, under the dome. Yeah, under the dome, significantly less damage. So, you're winning in the mid-range, but you'd like an even better boost. You know, this is a match where she's usually in the mid-range, you put that up, then you get to play your game and take less damage when you turn out to be wrong. Very, very strong move. So a move for somebody like me, I shouldn't use that because I don't ever, I'm never wrong. Well, I was. I thought you were about to say you're never winning in the mid-range. Yeah. <laughs> Don't, don't, don't <laughs> hype up, Burke. <laughs> I mean, I want you to talk more, but not in situations yeah, where it's against me. Yeah. All right, so one more loadout? Yeah. All right, I, I really like this one, too. I, I really like the shader. I like how this one looks a lot. <laughs> hype. Oh, yeah. All right, yeah, the Electrum, I think it looks great. The pants, the cool arm gear. And here, I actually replaced her Demon's Gate with a projectile. 
She gets this energy wave. It does not last full screen, but you can see it's very slow. It allows you to follow it. And the meter burn is super cool. She'll actually do another wave, and then it becomes bigger. And again, it travels, and she can go behind. So she can kind of do stuff like that, and then use that to buy time, to summon the Bulba, all kind of fun stuff. It so also uh, does two hits up close as well. Kind of oh, yeah. I love it because you go back full screen. Just the animation of this is really cool because he goes across, and then the next one is over. Yes. So then it's like it's, it's a cross pattern. So I just think it's a nice attention to detail, really cool. We were saying before that she's not really a traditional zoner. If that's what you want, if you're, for example, a doctor from Ohio that's been desperately looking for a new zoner, you could equip this move and here you go. You can play player matches and use this and zone to your heart's content. <laughs> really personalizing the stream. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, cool, cool. Those are great. I think we should probably get into some matches. Play some matches. Let's play some, play some money matches. Games. Yeah.